In the last video, we introduced the concept of an inner product, and an inner product has a variety of properties. When we work in Rn, the specific instance of the inner product that we work with is called the dot product. Let's go ahead and look at properties of the dot product as inherited from our core definitions of the inner product. So this was our property one of an inner product. It doesn't matter which order that we call the inner product. So what does that mean for the dot product here? That means whether I do u dot v or v dot u, I get the same answer. What about property two? Property two is kind of the scale factor being able to be pulled out of the argument of the inner product. Well, when I'm talking about the dot product, that means if I have alpha u dotted with v, that is equal to alpha times u dot v. So that's a useful property of the dot product. Property three of the inner product was kind of this distributed rule, which means if I add up two vectors and then take the inner product with a third, that's the same thing as just inner product plus inner product. So what does that mean here? That means if I have u plus v dotted with w, that is equal to u dot w plus v dot w. So a nice distributive rule there. And then finally, the fourth property, the inner product of u and u is always greater than or equal to zero. So that means my dot product is always greater than or equal to zero. And it's going to equal zero if and only if u is zero. So this is just me recasting these four inner product properties for the specific instance of our inner product being a dot product. Let's go ahead and do some short proofs for these. They're actually really easy to solve, just very direct algebraic manipulation. So I'm going to assume that I have vectors u and v here as I try to establish this first proof. So let me just go ahead and directly compute u dot v. So u dot v is u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus all the way down to un vn. So here is just a scalar after I add all those things up. We know when I multiply two numbers together, it doesn't matter what order I multiply them by. So this is exactly the same thing as v1 u1 v2 u2 all the way down to vn un and now look at that that now looks like v dot u so i've directly computed that u dot v equals v dot u and that establishes property one of the dot product we can do very similar kind of direct proofs for the rest of the properties let's go ahead and do that property two i need to compute what alpha u dotted with v is so what is alpha u so alpha u just means multiply every coordinate of u by alpha, so I've done that there, and then dot it with v. And now if I use my definition of the dot product, it just means multiply each coordinate and then add them all up. So that's alpha u1 v1 plus alpha u2 v2 plus all the way down to alpha un vn. And now what can I do? Look, there's an alpha on every single term here that I'm adding up, so I can factor out that alpha. That's pretty easy. And now look what I have inside right here. That is u dot v. That's just the definition of u dot v. So that's equal to alpha times the quantity u dot v. So we've directly shown that this is equal to this, which establishes property two. So another very easy direct proof. All right, just two more to work through. Property three says u plus v, the quantity, dotted with w. So let's go ahead and work with that directly. Let's take u add it to v, and then dot it with w. So first on the inside here, I need to go ahead and add up what that vector addition is. Just add up all those components. So that's just normal vector addition. And then I still dot that with w. Now we can apply our definition of the dot product and just multiply coordinate by coordinate. So that's u1 plus v1 quantity times w1 plus the quantity u2 v2 times w2 all the way down. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Now what do I want to do? Let's just go ahead and use normal distributive property of multiplication. So that's u1 w1 plus v1 w1. So I just distributed that, and then we'll distribute that right there as u2 w2 plus v2 w2 all the way down. Okay. And now if I look at this, look at these different pieces that I have here. This piece plus this piece plus all these pieces here, that's just u dot w, right? And then similarly, this piece plus this piece plus all these V and W pieces together, that's just V dot W. So this turns into U dot W plus V dot W, which is exactly what we were trying to show. I was trying to show that this 
equals this, and I did it via a direct computation. All right, one more property, u dot u, so that's u dot u, this is equal to u1 squared plus u2 squared plus all the way down to un squared. And obviously this has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? I have a squared thing plus a squared thing plus a squared thing. Yeah, all these are real valued things. These are vectors in Rn. So even if a single coordinate is negative, after I square it, it has to be positive. So yeah, so u dot u is definitely greater than or equal to zero. If u is equal to zero, what do I end up with? I end up with zero squared plus zero squared plus zero squared, and I get zero. So if the vector u is the all zero vector, the dot product of u dot u is zero. Okay, so that establishes one direction. What if u dot u is zero? What if the dot product is zero? Well, that tells me that u1 squared plus u2 squared plus all these squared things has to equal zero. So if I look at that, the only way all of these things can equal zero is if u1 is zero, because u1 can't be negative. None of these numbers can be negative. So that means u1 has to be zero. Otherwise, you know, that's a positive number, and that would make this not zero. So u1 has to be zero. Same thing, u2 has to be zero. If u2 is not zero, then I don't have a zero over here. So u2 has to be zero. So all these coordinates have to be zero, which means that I must have the zero vector. So this was the first direction. If u is the all zero vector, the dot product's zero. This is the other direction. If the dot product is zero, then the vector u must be zero. So combining these, we now know that u dot u equaling zero if and only if the vector u is zero. And that was the final part of the last property that I wanted to establish. All right, so that wraps up looking at and proving a variety of dot product properties. In the next video, we want to introduce the concept of what we call the norm of a vector. So the norm of a vector is a new quantity. It's basically the size of the vector, and it's based on our definition of an inner product, or in this case specifically, a dot product.